Hello, my name is Teresa Almeida and I'm a professor at the Faculty of Fine Arts, Porto University, and also a researcher in VCART. Uh, today I'm going to present the art and craft of the immateriality of glass, architectural and blow glass. The presentation will be divided into two parts. One, it's the dialogues uh, between the craftsmen and the designers, he, having the glass blowing as an example. And the second part, it's the dialogues between craftsmen and the artists, having an architecture glass, you know, stained glass as an example. The first part, I will speak in about a region specifically of glass blowing, Medine Grand and a place called Sinkal, that is a training place for glass. So Sinkal has a specificity of uh, glass training and not only on glass blowing, but also on kiln casting, fusing, lamp working, and it has a very good cold shopping area. So every year, the students of the Faculty of Fine Arts they go there and make a training on glass blowing with the glass uh, blowers, the craftsmen. The students bring drawings, the students bring ideas, and together with them, they create uh, pieces for their artistic work. Here we can see Rodolfo and Caterina. They are students that they already went uh, to think out to do this training. So sometimes when the students have some formation before, they will do some works together. In here, we can see a work of Rodolfo that is, he's going to show this year on his master thesis, and it's connecting to the relation that he has with his own body. And here, it's a work of Caterina, and Caterina integrates metal into glass metal in a way that she wants to exhibit the interior of the pieces. In this piece particularly, Caterina made it by herself because she already had some training. Uh, another issue that I would like to focus is the design and craftsmen. So, uh, I would like to give Joana Silva, she's a designer, as one example. Joana Silva, uh, she's in charge of the training uh, center in Marina Grande. She's the person responsible for organizing the courses and also she organizes some workshops and some lectures and some collaborative projects on glass. In here we can see her speaking with Evelyn Du, which is a glass blower, and also with Samuel. So in Joana's cases, she also participated on making her own pieces. Here you have some examples of her uh, the, the glass works. Uh, she collaborates a lot, as I said, with the designer glass blowers that work in factories, but her main focus is to integrate all techniques that were used in Meringue Grande and make new pieces with those techniques. These are the, uh, some of her works. In here, we can see another piece. And these are her final works uh, that she's just testing and uh, making new examples. Of Portugal was one of the projects that uh, Joana participated. It was uh, also done at Senkal. Then uh, designers were invited to make pieces with the glass blowers, and then the works were exhibited in London. Craftsman design. In this case, I want to present Nelson Figueiredo. Nelson Figueiredo uh, had his old training at Sencal. He's a glass blowing art designer or artist, if you want to, but he also had a big studio that he. Uh, works on projects of other designers. So, if there are some people that want to make a glass blowing piece, they contact Nelson and he produces in his studio. He also has a gallery that is uh, located in the city center of Marinha Grande. 
And now I will going to speak about the second part, the craftsmen and the artist architecture glass, and specifically about Antonio Studio. Antonio Studio was uh, a family studio in Porto. So we had the father, the grandfather, and the son. Uh, in this image here, we can see some photos of the studio in the 50s. It was a very uh, promotive studio. They did a lot of work from other artists and most of the stained glasses are displayed in Portugal, but also we have some abroad. And here it's the, um, the last studio. It's located in the city center of Porto. And we can see it that it still maintains like uh, the old fashioned way of making the stained glass. This is just one example that was done in the studio. We can see Signor José here. He was the craftsman that was responsible for cutting and assemble the stained glass. And this work, it's uh, situated in Coimbra, in the city, in more or less center of Portugal. It's a health clinic, and uh, the diameter of the, the stained glass is five meters, and the height is eight meters. So because of this, uh, João Lequim Antunes, which uh, he was the last generation of the of the studio, decided to create a stained glass museum to integrate not all because it was not possible to put everything in the in the museum, but to display uh, some of the projects that were done at the studio. The museum it's very well. Uh, uh, Placed, it's near the cathedral uh, in Porto, and one of the final works, you know, the final works that was done in the studio was the big uh, roof window. It was a pyramid, an inverted pyramid that was produced on the studio, and for that I was invited to make the stained glass. So this is me producing already the, the project in my studio. And I am here, you know, discussing the, the big results with Signor José, the same person I show you uh, in, the last, in one of the last slides that produced the big stained glass for the health clinic. That was uh, one of the latest uh, big works that was done at this studio. After making all the markets and everything, Signor José started to cut all the glass the way he used to do it for more than 40 years. And then, because of that, we also um, had some help from another craftsman that, is, that decided to come and help Signor Figueiredo, but also to learn with him the old ways that he was producing. So, in a way, to compare it with the ways they were working in their studio. So, after the stained glass was produced, it was placed inside the museum. We can see here how they are placed. And this is the image that shows the final work on the museum. The work has related to the three generations. That was my idea when I was creating the design. The three generations of the Antunus studio and also the museum. So, I think with the final remarks we can say as Ersna Schultz says that most of the crafts are not a solo task. We can see that. You need collaboration. Most of the times, the work produces presents a certain complexities, and the execution of the artworks arises with the interchanges. The relationship between glass blowers and their craftsmanship fosters a constant creative learning process. Dialogues should be established between those who design the work and those who execute the work. As we can see, if the, without these dialogues, most of the works will not be possible to be made. Thank you. You have my email here in case you want to send some 
questions, I will try to reply with my best. Thank you so much.